everybody, welcome back to Mask of the Slasher. Uh, we're at episode 15. Woo -hoo! Yeah, what, what? Uh, today we are doing, well, we're doing what everybody else is doing. Yeah. We're doing a Valentine's Day episode. Oh. Anyway, yeah, we're doing a Valentine's Day episode. Um, why? Because we want to. Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> There is another part to this. I will say, we'll, we'll preemptively say this. Yes. That on Valentine's Day, Josh and I do not go to restaurants. And well, we did last year and then we got COVID. So yeah. instead we celebrate our dog, Dottie. Yes. Her adoption date, which happened to be on Valentine's Day. And so it, we like to celebrate her because we find that pet adoption is important. Yes, absolutely. And... Um, and it's a lot more fun to celebrate our puppy. So we thought we would go through some of the traditional stuff, yes. some of the not so traditional stuff. It's all based around love. Yes. In some way or another. That's right. That's how we decided to go with this. Yes. Um, so, of course, the first movie we're going to talk about, we're just going to get this one out get of the way. Up. My Bloody Valentine. Ah! From 1981. Most people have seen this. Yes. I mean, what, what more can be said about this one at this point? It's campy, it's fun, it's stupid. It's just a good good time to watch, basically. It is. <laughs> it's just a fun movie to watch. It makes no so sense. So ridiculous. Um, the storyline makes no sense. No, not really. Um, but this was part of when they started doing um, holiday horror right, movies. Right, right. Um, because of Halloween. Yes. Everybody was like, hey, Friday the 13th and Valentine's Day and Christmas and Boxing yeah, Day and Boxing day. <laughs> Flag Day. Is there a day. Boxing Day horror movie? Let us know yeah, in the comments. Yeah. Is there a Flag Day <laughs> that's one? That's right. <laughs> President's Day. Uh, so that's where this movie came from. If you don't already know, all it was was that it was a mining town. There was a mining mm -hmm. accident. Yep. Some just dumb... happens to be on Valentine's Day. It does. Day, it just basically. happens to be on Valentine's Day. Some kids went to drink down in the yeah, mine. Yeah. People get chopped up. You know, you know what happens. You guys have seen this one. <laughs> yeah, you've seen this. Now, for science, yes. we decided to watch the remake, which oh. we had never seen before. And um, I fell asleep. Well, let me tell you, I had a little glimmer of hope when I saw that Tom Atkins was in it. And then I started to watch it, and I realized that Tom Atkins was slumming big time in this movie. And I turned it off after maybe, I maybe made it 20 minutes into it, I think, before I shut it off. And it's funny because, again, you know, he's in it, and then one of the guys that was in the series Supernatural was mm -hmm. in it. So, it, I mean, there's some known people in it who have done, you know, horror-related things or whatever, but it was just awful. It was yeah. the worst damn thing i've ever seen yeah <laughs> it, it was, was a really, paycheck for was, that man oh yeah, yeah tom atkins was yeah. just collecting the paycheck for sure and you know what props to him <laughs> yeah it's just it was hot garbage yeah not, so, a good, not a good movie at all stick with the original yes so i'm gonna yes. say that's usually the case on yes. most movies well, yeah mm -hmm. um so next we decided to go down lover's lane yes oh where people get massacred yeah. ah! The next movie we're going to talk about is The Town That Dreaded Sundown. Uh, this movie is based on a true story. Yes. Um, it was murder. It was four different murders that happened on Lover's Lane, you know, the fake Lover's Lane mm, name. Right. Um, in Texarkana in and around the area. Um, this was February to May in 1946 when this actually happened. And so they made a movie about it, yes. and the town plays it every year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, there's some good scenes. Oh, yeah, the, the uh, trombone scene is by far the best, in my opinion. <laughs> what the? I don't know. I, you, you guys have seen this movie, so we can talk about it. You've all seen this movie. Yeah. We know you have. Yeah. But strapping a knife to a trombone <laughs> and then stabbing somebody while playing the trombone. That is, that is sure brilliance right there. Oh my God. <laughs> it was, it was, it went a little too far with the campy. Yeah. Well, now know? my question is, did that actually happen? I mean, it's based on a true story. <laughs> that actually happened. Did he really kill somebody with a trombone? 
And if so, how would they know? Did he leave the trombone at the scene? Exactly. <laughs> you know, I will admit, I do a lot of research. I didn't research the trombone Darn, murder. I really want to know because that's 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 the defining sorry scene in this movie. I do know that there was some form of quote that was actually used. Um, that it was actually said in the original murder, something like, take off your britches. Oh, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> now, I mean, back then, I'm sure britches, yeah, you know, 1946, 1946, that was a normal word to right, be used. Right, right. But today, I would probably laugh. Yes. yes. Be like, my, my britches, huh? Yeah. And I will say that I did watch the remake uh, the other day. And they did change it to take off your pants, which was unfortunate. <sighs> like, granted, this was set in the modern, like, it was set in modern times. This yeah. remake, so. But, um. Also fell asleep during this. <laughs> you didn't miss much. But no. Just saying, they did change it to take off your pants, unfortunately. They should have kept the britches in there for authenticity, but, you know. That would have been fantastic. It was a disappointment, also, I have to say, the, the remake. Mm-hmm. Um, it could have just been done better. Oh yeah, that it was a kind of a clever premise to it mm -hmm. because it was, you know, it was it was basically taking place however many you know years after the murders, fifty years or something like that, the original murders, and they actually had parts of the showed parts of the original movie in it to kind yeah. of say, hey, this is you know this is trying to make it like it's happening in real life kind mm -hmm. of thing. But um, so the premise was there, the idea was actually somewhat clever for the remake, but it just the acting was pretty piss poor yeah and uh you know things like that so they did recreate the trombone scene though so i mean oh i missed it yeah you missed it yeah oh, shit. so and you know here's the thing is that i i had some high hopes at the beginning when they said that it was a bloom house right right and i was like oh well maybe it won't suck too bad yeah, it's, it's, no nope. it's pretty sucky let it's, me tell you it sucks a lot not so great sir sucks a lot not so great so the next movie yes is life after beth yes. now this movie we we didn't quite know what to expect when we first saw it yeah. we about a month or so ago yeah this was a late to the party situation it for us for absolutely sure absolutely was and boy are we glad we watched it yes now aubrey plaza is in this and if you know who that is then well you're amazing but no <laughs> she was in what the Parks and Recreation, and I don't know, some other shit. But anyway, she's just got this really great dry sense mm -hmm. of humor and personality, yeah. which is hilarious. Yeah. So her and her boyfriend are dating, and he was hiking. Yeah. And there was a snake bite, yes. and she came back as a zombie. Yes. And, but it was, her family's trying to hide her <laughs> and all this stuff. But what's funny about this and why this is a kind of a love story in a sense is that before she went on that hike and her and her boyfriend were kind of on the outs and he was pretty bummed about it and she, he was just went crazy when she died and all this stuff. And then when she came back, she was just, it was like nothing bad had ever happened right. and she was head over heels for him. But it was one of those stories, once again, of be careful what you wish for. Exactly. Because, of course, he was ecstatic that she was back. Yes. But <laughs> when people come back from the dead, it's never a good That's situation. Right. Pet cemetery. Well, sometimes that is better. That's right. Yeah. We all know how that works out. Yep. Yep. So it was a it was a really cute movie. <laughs> Um, the other person that's in it is Dane DeHaan. I'm assuming I'm saying that correctly. Anyway, he's gone on to do a bunch of stuff like Oppenheimer. Wow. So I was good like, yeah, <laughs> good, good deal. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, so I thought it was a great movie. Yeah, this though. is a good movie. That Aubrey Plaza, she's a quirky son of a gun. So yeah. she, I felt she was perfect for that part. Um, yes. I, yeah. And, and she was married to the director, by the way, Weird. when they, they filmed this. Because this was filmed in 2014. They married in 2011, I think mm -hmm. it was. When it, I was like, oh, getting your girlfriend part. Yeah. yeah well. know, so. um, whatever. Old nepotism. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it was just a, it was a good movie. It had yeah. great humor in yeah. it. It was gross. Yeah, great still. humor, some gross special effects. Yeah. Just a good, just a nice twist on a zombie movie. And if if we can get Krista to enjoy a zombie movie, that's an accomplishment because... I'm over them. She's not a zombie fan. No, I'm tired of zombies. 
You know what it was? It was The Walking Dead. Oh, yeah, for sure. It just, everything became so popular with zombies. Yeah. It was just zombie everything, mm -hmm. and yeah. it became mainstream, and then it just wasn't as cool anymore, because yeah. zombies used to be gross. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, it just, and they're boring. Yeah. They just take forever. <laughs> it's secret. Not fast zombies, though. <laughs> it's just a dumb concept. No, it's I'm really saying. not. It really is not <laughs> smart. Anyway, it, it uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, you can bake all you want, but uh, it's not good. Anyway, so I think that the best the the best zombie movie out there is the Shaun of the Dead. That is an amazing, movie. and it's because it makes fun of right. zombies, yeah, and the whole zombie genre. Yeah, I think that that yeah, that is an amazing movie. It really is just. Yeah, that's that scene movie. where they're they're singing the bass line to White Line in oh, between yeah. his moaning. Yeah, that's the best. That that's what my, I think of every time I see zombies. Now is that part <laughs> that of that movie? That is a damn good movie. Yeah. Someday we will torture Krista with a zombie episode. So. Yay! I can't wait. Be I'm excited. I, I am. I'm very excited for that. It's going to happen. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, um, we celebrate Valentine's Day because of adoption, because of adopting our dog. And uh, Dottie is a huge part of our life, and we don't know where we'd be without her. So we thought we'd let her pick a movie, too. And it... Eh. It's a little different, but let it, let's introduce Dottie once again. Here she is, the guest of honor. There she is. Our little old lady, Dottie. Yes. Um, Dottie is almost 10 years old. She'll be 10 in August. Yep. So she's slow and grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> she's got a heart on her butt, though. Yes, she does. So that's pretty fantastic, and, and she's just a great dog. She is. She's wonderful. So the movie that she chose, and I thought it was a little... I don't know what I talked to her about this and I was like, I don't know, Dot. I don't know. <laughs> but she decided with Cujo. Well, you know, maybe she's got a little bit of a crush. I think she does. <laughs> she likes the St. Bernard. I think Cujo's a little big for her, but you know. <laughs> Logistically speaking, yes, I think that might be a little awkward. Um, so we're like, okay, that's cool. You know, you, you get your, your shot at this. So that's what we got. And there, there is a love triangle aspect to the movie as well. There so, is. I mean, it does kind of fit the theme of our episode, even if uh, yeah. it's a little off kilter. Yeah. There's some adultery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, but uh, so both Josh and I have not watched this movie since we were kids. Right. It scared the bejesus out of me when I was a child. Um, and it just is hot. Oh yeah. You will hear me talk about hot movies and it, it is a a thing that I can't I hate watching movies that where they're in a desert and it's hot and it's just it just makes me hot and I hate the heat. Ugh. So no Dune or Mad Max for this girl no, here. I avoid them like the plague. I gotta watch those by myself. Yes. He even had to go to the theater by himself to see some of that stuff. And he will again for the new Dune. Yep. Um so Oh, and anything with Charles Bronson, because he always looks hot. He's not in like a good, not yeah, in a good way. Say, was... In like a Marlboro leather skin, like I'm just hot. Oh, it just, <laughs> it's just gross. So anyway, Cujo, hot. Yes. And they do it. They do it. They're like sweating to death and dehydrated in the car, waiting for this dog. Right. To piss off, and it won't. Yes. And you really feel bad for the dog. Oh yeah, exactly. Um, you know this dog. He was just a farm dog. Yeah. He was just kind of neglected in a sense. Right. You know, just oh, well, everybody else was so much more important. Yes. So when he got bit by a bat, poor Cujo, yeah. he got rabies. Yep. He became rabid. Yes. And sweaty and snotty yeah. and. And they just all kind of ignored it. Yeah. And finally, the loud noises got to him. And I, yeah. And I'd just like to say, what a well-trained dog that must have been. Oh, my gosh. Been. We were discussing this. Like, how did they get all that shit on him? Yeah. 
And him be able to just sit there and snarl yeah. and, and just act like he's rabbit. Like, that's a super tolerant dog. Because mm-hmm. I can't imagine that was easy to get him to look that way and stuff like that. As yes. far as, you know, the fake blood and the drool. You know, I'm, I'm sure that was some of that drool was probably real. Because it's a St. Yeah, Bernard. St. Bernard's, yeah. But uh, some of it, well, a lot of it had to have been fake. And, yeah. you know, things of that nature. So it's just amazing to me exactly uh, you know that that dog must have been a really good sport put it that way yeah you know? absolutely and, and i'd also like to bring up the fact that you you said that the movie scared you as a kid what a harrowing movie it is mm-hmm. i mean that's really terrifying actually yeah. i did i didn't remember it being that that scary but it is very scary movie it is very scary well and we had a pinto they're trapped in a pinto in this mm-hmm. movie and that pinto those seats burned my legs every summer so here they are in this pinto when it's hot and they got this disgusting dog trying to kill yeah. them and there's no hope. Yeah. No hope for them anywhere. So it um it definitely was it was a lot. Yeah, and the lot. the attack scenes are just very like very vicious. They have just a very vicious uh, unrelenting yes. feeling to them. Yeah. And, you know, I've, obviously I've never been around a rabid animal. I don't know if that's really what it's like, but uh, that was, uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that was incredibly terrifying, the way they depicted all of that, I thought. I was, yeah, I was surprised by how well it held up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, because it, it, despite, you know, fashion or whatever, mm-hmm. still equally terrifying. Yeah. Because you just feel helpless. Right. There's just absolutely nothing you can do. Now, I did think about one thing, though. Why didn't, because they were up on a hill, Mm -hmm. she technically probably could have put her car in neutral and rolled back down the hill. Now, granted, Cujo could still probably follow her down, but she would have been more seen if that would have been the case. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess until you're in that situation. Right. Also, why were the back seats always down? Oh, yeah, good call. Yeah. yeah, so that little boy can sit in the back and cook to death Apparently, in the hatchback. Yeah, yeah. And a Tinto. <laughs> Oof, rough. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what Dot decided to pick. Yes. She's, um, I don't know, you got a bad taste in men. Yeah, I guess so. Oof. Yeah. it's. He was probably an okay guy before becoming rabid. Yeah, he seemed pretty friendly, <laughs> you know. He had very kind eyes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and he probably wanted to hug her and kiss her yeah, and love her. That's and, right. Um, hopefully not call her George. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this dog. <laughs> I was say, this little one wants to see her mom. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, Valentine's Day, a lot of people are pretty bitter about it. And I understand why. Um, so find some another, another reason to celebrate. Exactly. Hey, if you're Catholic, it's also Ash Wednesday, we That's just right. learned. That's right. We'll watch, some, watch some horror movies, go to church, do whatever you want. Yeah, do, do, <laughs> do you. Do whatever you want to do. Yeah, you know, you don't have to celebrate it. You don't have to give in to it. That's right. Enjoy those amazing conversation hearts, which I know not all, everybody likes, yeah, I but say, I think they're amazing. Reap the rewards of candy and stuff. Yeah, candy. <laughs> what more could you want? You go to Walmart the day after Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. 50% off. That's right. Discount Hershey Kisses, baby. Yeah, whoop, whoop. Yeah. So, anyway, if there's any other, like, lovey-dovey movies that you guys can think of that you would, I don't know. I mean, a lot of movies, they have a love aspect in them, right. you know, in some way or another, because that's what tugs at us. And, yes. And, but really, I'm just like, ugh, yeah. you know, barf, pukey, lovey stuff. Yeah. But, anyway, that's it for this week. Yes. Don't forget to like and subscribe, as the kids say. Uh, We appreciate everybody that has uh, decided to check us out so far. We hope you're enjoying it. If if there's something you'd like us to do more of or less of or do better, uh, let us know in the comments. Absolutely. And don't forget to adopt. Yes. This was Mm -hmm. just strictly a a by chance that we just happened to walk in and see this dog. Yes, spur of the moment kind of decision. And we also, fun fact, we kind of stole our way from an old man. Yeah. Yep, I just happened to get in line right before a guy that wanted her too, and because Krista was just like, uh, when when we went into the room with her, she immediately came up and started licking my face, and Krista was like, "Go, go get in line, go get yeah. in line," and I ran up to the front to get in line, and just happened to be uh, right in front of the other person that wanted her, so it was uh, pure 
pure luck. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and and same thing with our dog before, you know, we, you just, you do luck out. Yes. You know, so give these doggies a chance. They do need homes. Uh, she was under a year old when we got her mm -hmm. and she was a good puppy from the beginning. Yep. There was a couple Tootsie Rolls left yeah. from time to time. Yeah, that pooping behind the couch incident. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a little, it was a much, but yeah. it was fine. Yeah, oh yeah. It was fine, oh, yeah. you know. In the scheme of things, it was nothing. Yeah, she's been a great she's dog. She's been a great girl since the beginning. And, uh, and uh, don't forget to spay and neuter your pets. Yes. The wise man once said, with a skinny microphone. Who? Bob Barker. Oh, Bob Barker. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.